So in this video, we're going to be going over covalent bonding, uh, just kind of the basic concept of what it is, and then four easy rules for actually making your kind of Lewis dot structures of covalent bonding so that you get, get all of your covalent structures correct, okay? All right, so first of all, covalent bonding is, is element sharing electrons, okay? There is no transfer. And since there is no transfer of electrons, this means there are no ions, right? I'm not making a cation or an anion by either taking an electron or gaining an electron, right? Apologies for the puppy noises in the back. <laughs> it's just, 2020 is a weird year. Okay. All right, so there's no transfer of electrons, which means we're not having cations and anions. Instead, we are completely sharing electrons. And just to make sure, Okay, we're sharing valence electrons, right? We don't care about the, the inside shells, we care about the outermost shell, our valence shell. Okay, so we're sharing valence electrons. And this means since we're sharing, okay, not transferring electrons, not making cations or anions, we're sharing. So this is going to be a non-metal bonding to another non-metal, okay? So we have non-metals bonding together, all right? Which means, Okay, if I look at my beautiful periodic table, I'm not dealing with a lot of elements with covalent bonding, right? So my non-metals are on the right-hand side of my stair step. So I'm dealing with these guys and also hydrogen. Okay, so not a lot of elements involved in covalent bonding, but very important, okay? All right, let's look at how to bond these things. Okay, so there are rules in how to, to bond this stuff, but I think it would be best to first kind of see an actual example. That way you can visualize it, okay? So chlorine gas is Cl2, and we are going to look at that. I'm gonna draw them different colors just so you can kind of, again, visualize it. All right, so chlorine is right here, right? On my third period, so that means it has three electron shells, right? And it's right here in my halogens. So one, two three, four, five, six, seven valence electrons, okay? So let's draw that. I'm gonna draw one of them red and another one blue. Hooray, United States. <laughs> okay, but just really so you can see the difference of where these electrons are coming from, okay? We'll speed this up for you. Okay, so here are my two chlorine atoms, right? These are neutral, not they haven't bonded yet, okay? They have a full inner shell, full first shell, full second shell, but then their third shell, they each have seven valence electrons, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, okay? Okay, now it would not make sense for these chlorines to transfer electrons, right? Because this chlorine is like, just give me one electron, I'll make a negative one charge, I'll make an ion, but if it stole this electron from chlorine, from the red chlorine, right, then blue chlorine is happy because he would have eight electrons, but now red chlorine is screwed because now he only has six, okay? So this part doesn't work. Instead, what happens is they're going to move close enough to have their shells overlap. So hopefully this will work, okay? So they're going to, let's see if I can get this to, work here maybe get that guy under okay kind of ish haha -ha, ta-da okay that's the best it's gonna get <laughs> okay all right so you could imagine if these um if these valence shells kind of move closer to overlap so they share right so no chlorine gave up any any electrons okay no ions are formed, but now both chlorines are happy and stable following the octet rule. And you can count around to see, okay, if they actually did this correctly, okay? So on my red chlorine now, right? Red chlorine still has seven red electrons in his third valence shell, in his third shell, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. But now it also has this eighth blue electron from this chlorine in his valence shell, okay? So red chlorine is happy and stable. And blue chlorine still has seven blue electrons 
and his valence shell, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And it also has this nice eighth red electron, okay, from red chlorine, from the first chlorine, okay? So both chlorines are stable and happy. They have come together and they are sharing two electrons, right? Cl <laughs> That's my son in the background. Okay, so the red chlorine is sharing one electron and a blue chlorine is sharing one electron. So they're each sharing an electron and this is making a covalent bond. They are sharing electrons together, okay? Okay, now that's the Bohr model, right? We don't really draw out the Bohr model for every <laughs> covalently bonded uh, compound. That would take a long, long time, okay? So instead, we would draw Lewis dots, so chlorine and chlorine. All right, and you're gonna draw your um, draw your Lewis dot structures for each chlorine and draw them in a circle, okay? And I do this because I want my singles to add up, okay? So we'll go over the rules in just a second, but I just want you to see what this looks like, all right? So this chlorine has seven valence and this chlorine has seven valence. Neither one of them are stable. They need to share, okay? And for covalent bonds, we just play connect the dots. So we're gonna show that this electron and this electron are shared in this lovely bond. All right, now, okay, this like line, the line on these Lewis dot structures shows a shared bond. So this shows a covalent bond, okay? It's showing two shared electrons, All right? One electron, came from this chlorine, one electron came from the other chlorine, all right? And if I count up now, each chlorine is happy and stable, right? So if I ignore this chlorine, my chlorine on the left has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight valence electrons, happy and stable, good. If I cover up the chlorine on the left, this chlorine on the right has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight electrons, happy and stable, good, okay? This is how we're going to draw out our covalent structures, and there are four easy, easy rules that we're gonna follow, okay? But we will draw them out as valent structures. You will not have to draw out like overlapping Bohr structures, okay? All right, so to make sure that you're making all of your covalent structures correctly, step number one is to count up all your valence electrons that every atom should have. And we will go over examples, I promise, okay? But just so we get all the steps out, all right? So count up your valence electrons from the atoms involved in the compound, involved in that molecule. All right, and then step two, draw your Lewis dot for each atom, okay? Two little points to remember for drawing your Lewis dot, okay? Remember to draw your, your dots in a circle, okay? Like north, east, south, west, all right? Don't pair up your electrons if they don't have to be paired up. And the other thing to remember is that your single electrons will bond. Okay, so it's nice. Covalent bonding is kind of like your uh, atomic dating site, okay? You're gonna see where the single electrons are and you're gonna bond them up, okay? We're making bonds. All right, step three. Uh, step three, you're going to connect your dots. So connect the singles, okay? So yay, couples. You're going to show that you are sharing electrons by connecting the dots. And a couple of tips here is put the most singles in the middle, okay? I will look at exactly what this is, but when when you have all your different atoms, the, the way that you can make these Lewis dot structures you know, easier for you is to identify the atom that has the most singles because that's going to make the most bonds. Put him in the middle and bond everything else to him. Okay, that will that will save you some heartaches. Okay, um, and then just some some fair warning. Okay, for step three, some of these can get tricky. Okay, some of your covalently bonded things can can be hard to bond. Okay, these are puzzles. So don't get frustrated if you're trying to make them and it's confusing or you can't figure out, you know, exactly where this single is going to bond with that single or whatever. Okay. It is a puzzle. Sometimes when you're putting a puzzle together, you're like, oh good, these two fit perfectly. And then when you look back at the puzzle, you're like, oh wait, no, no, that wasn't the right puzzle piece there. It actually needs to be this puzzle piece. Okay. So don't get discouraged. 
there, there are a lot of ways that you can start to connect these larger molecules with their single dots, okay, with their single electrons. So just remember it's a puzzle and this part I think is fun. Okay, you are trying to figure out exactly the right way that these atoms are gonna come together and connect to make a covalently bonded molecule, okay? So sometimes you do have to take your time with step three. All right, and last but not least, you're going to check your work. And you do this two ways, okay? So first, you're going to check that your valence electrons match at the end from your step one at the beginning, okay? Counting up all valence electrons. So these two numbers from this number one and this number one, this should be the same number. If it's not, you did something wrong with part three, okay? Because you did not create or delete any electrons when you are making your compounds, okay? So make sure that your valence electrons should add up and should be the exact same number from when you started, all right? And part two is that your octet and duet rules should apply. Okay, so octet and duet rules means octet is most atoms, right? So most, most of your nonmetals are going to have eight valence electrons, just like your chlorine, right? They have eight valence electrons after they bonded, so they're nice and happy and stable. The duet rule pretty much only applies to hydrogen. Okay, so that's just for hydrogen. He is up here on your first shell and your first shell only has one, two valence electrons, okay? So hydrogen should have two electrons when he bonds and is stable. Everybody else should have eight in their valence shell, all right? Let's actually do examples so that this <laughs> will all make sense, okay? I put our little cheat sheet off to the side so that you can reference them, okay? And we will start with a nice, easy one. Okay, we're gonna start with water. First things first is to count up the valence electrons from each individual atom, okay? And if you can't do that right off the bat, if you don't know, like hydrogen has one valence, oxygen has six, then just start here with step two, draw your Lewis dot for each atom. So hydrogen has one valence. He's in the first column, All right? Here we go. And there's two hydrogen, so hydrogen, hydrogen. Oxygen has six valence electrons, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so oxygen should have one, two, three, four, five, six. And make sure you draw it circular, okay? Do not, do a different color. Don't draw oxygen one, two, three, four, five, six. Don't do this. Because if you do this, it looks like oxygen has no singles right? And we are going to be connecting our singles. So if you got into a good habit of, of drawing your Lewis dot structure like this, then you should be good with your actual Lewis dot structure forming, okay? All right, so if I was going to count up my valence electrons, I have one from hydrogen plus one from this hydrogen plus six from this oxygen, right? Which gives me eight valence electrons to start with. So I better end with eight when I'm done making my water covalent molecule, okay? All right, now draw a Lewis dot for each atom. I did, okay? I went in a circular motion and I now know my singles are going to bond. So I connect the dots, okay? You put the atom with the most singles in the middle, okay? So if I'm looking, hydrogen has one single. This hydrogen has one single. This oxygen has two singles. Okay, so however many singles you have is how many bonds you're going to make. It's a good little, it's a good little cheat. Okay, so the number of singles that an, that an atom has with his valence electrons is going to be the number of bonds that are made. So oxygen wants to make two bonds. He has the most singles. I'm going to put him in the middle. And I'm going to draw it the exact same way. Okay, and I'm going to put my hydrogens around so that I kind of connect my puzzle pieces, right? So this hydrogen I'm gonna put right underneath. You can see how that's gonna connect. And this hydrogen I'm gonna put over here. Now, I know that I drew this hydrogen with the electron, the, the one valence electron up top, okay? If I did that, if I drew this one valence electron up top, it's gonna to look kind of funny when I connect my dots. Okay, so I'll do it in a pencil so I can erase. And right, if I did it like this, put it up top and connected them, that kind of swoop looks weird. So you can rotate your electrons to put the singles 
All right, to put those, those bonding electrons in the middle, all right? So that they're going to actually share them equally. Imagine that these are two kids who are sharing a toy, okay? One of them is like, here, I'll share my toy with you. I'll put my truck here in front of you and me, right, in between us. And this kid is like, oh, sure, I'll share my truck with you too, but I'm going to put him off to the side so you can't really have him, right? That's not very good sharing. And we would tell our toddlers, no, don't do that. We would say, actually put it in the middle so you can both share, right? So I'm not changing anything if I'm putting my hydrogen valence electron right here. I'm still showing that this hydrogen had one valence electron. I'm just actually putting it in a place where the oxygen is going to share, okay? Hopefully that makes sense. And now I just connect, right, connect the dots. I'm gonna connect my, connect my singles, it's a puzzle, right? This is the fun part, so connect those singles, connect those singles, all right? I connected my singles, and now I check my answer. I have to make sure that my total valence electrons is the same as what I started with, so I should have eight. All right, so count up my total electrons. A bond represents two, so here's two, three, four, five, six, eight. Okay, so hooray. I started with eight and I ended with eight. All right, and now check that my octet and duet rules are satisfied. So first, we'll look at this hydrogen. Ignore every other atom, okay? Just look at hydrogen. This hydrogen has one, two electrons. Duet rule is satisfied. We'll look at oxygen, okay? Block off these guys. Oxygen has two, four, six, eight. He has eight valence electrons. His octet rule is satisfied. Yay. Block off these guys. This hydrogen has one, two. His duet rule is satisfied. So octet and duet rules are good. This is the covalent mo molecular structure for water. All right, let's do another one. Okay, NH3. That is ammonia. This is in a lot of cleaning products. Okay, so... Um, if you ever have that like strong smell of, of cleaning products, you're probably smelling ammonia. And let's do this guy, okay? So count up your valence electrons. If you can't just right off the bat do it, then draw it out, okay? So I'm gonna have nitrogen, hydrogen, 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 okay? And honestly, you're going to do this so much and you're gonna get so used to it, you won't even have to do the, you know, parts one and two. But for now, just to make sure that we're really getting it, let's do it. Okay, so nitrogen should have five. One, two, three, four, five. So in a circle, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, got to buddy up those top ones. Then each hydrogen has one. One, one, and one. Okay, and I'm going to count up my valence electrons. So I'm starting with five plus one plus one plus one, which means I start with eight valence electrons. So I better end with eight at the end, right? So now I look at how many singles each one of these atoms have, right? Nitrogen has one, two, three singles. So he wants to make three bonds. Each hydrogen only has one single. So they only want to make one bond. So I'm going to put nitrogen in the middle. I'm going to draw in the exact same way. And hopefully you can see what's going to happen, right? I'm going to put these three hydrogens where the three single electrons are from nitrogen. Okay, so one hydrogen here, one hydrogen here, one hydrogen here. It doesn't matter that I'm rotating the, the electron to the side. That's fine. Okay, I need to find a way to connect my puzzle. So we connect our singles, all right? Connect the dots. And now we check our answer, okay? So part one, make sure that my valence electrons match up. So I'm gonna count my total electrons. Remember bonds count as two. So two, four, six, seven, eight. So these numbers match. And then make sure that your octet and duet rules are satisfied. They are, but we'll just go through it, right? If you're looking at just nitrogen. Okay, ignore every other atom. And nitrogen has two, four, six, eight. This hydrogen has two. This hydrogen has two, and this hydrogen has two. So duet rules are satisfied, everything's good. This is the correct structure for ammonia. Let's do one other example to make it slightly more difficult. So if I had something like this, C2H6, okay? I just, I do the exact same thing. So count up your valence, and if you don't know like 
how to do that just by just by looking at the elements because what you could do you could say carbon has four so four plus four is eight plus six is 14 right you could do that just right off the bat so you could say 14 valence okay or if you're not sure draw it out all right so two carbons one two three four each Maybe I should leave this here, right? Carbon is at four. One, two, three, four. And six hydrogens. Four, five, six. Okay. And we're going to add up our valence electrons. So four plus four plus six, right? One from each hydrogen. So 10, 14, Okay, doesn't matter how, how, which way you add it up, so long as you're able to add up your valence electrons that you start with, okay? And draw out your Lewis dot structure for each thing, all right? And your singles are going to bond. So put the one with the most singles in the middle. You'll notice that there are two of them that have four valence electrons. There are two of them that want to make four bonds. Put those suckers in the middle, okay? This is a puzzle, so if this part is confusing or tricky, don't get discouraged, right? We're just playing with the letters until we figure out exactly how they bond. Okay, so I've got two carbons and let's just bond their single guys right here. Okay, so I've made one bond between the two guys that had the most singles. All right, that's why, that's why I include this little, put the most singles in the middle, all right? It's a good little cheat to help you bond it correctly, all right? Now you'll notice six hydrogens and there's still six singles left to go. So basically every single dot gets a hydrogen. Okay, and then you just connect your dots. Ta-da! You've bonded everything. You have C2, two carbons and six hydrogens. So now we double check and make sure our answer is correct. So do we have the right number of valence electrons? Let's make sure we still have 14. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14. Okay, so our valence electrons match. And then we check our octet and duet rule, okay? Each hydrogen only made one bond, which means they all satisfy their duet rules, right? Everybody has one, two electrons. Now we just kind of have to look at our carbons. So let's see if I can... There we go. Okay, if you look at that carbon, he has two, four, six, eight. All right, he made four bonds. So that means he has eight electrons. So he's happy and satisfied. Okay, his valence electron octet rule is satisfied. And then you look at this guy and he has the same thing. Okay, octet rule is, is satisfied. Okay, hooray. So this would be the correct structure for C2H6. Um, the only thing I want to make sure that you see, okay, this is how I think is easiest for us to understand and draw it is that you're connecting your singles, right? You make this actual line to show that there's a covalent bond. You will also see another way to show this. Maybe I'll do it in a different color. Make this guy be red. Okay, and then you will sh like your book or Google might show it like this, okay? That there are two electrons in the middle vertically like this and they won't actually connect them. But they're showing that these two electrons are shared between the chlorines, okay? It's just a different way to notate the same thing. Okay, they're not gonna color code it for you. So it'll actually look like this. But what they're saying is that one electron came from the red, one electron came from the blue, one came from left, one came from right, and they're sharing. This means the same thing, okay? Uh, we just don't really use this notation. We use the lines to show that a covalent bond has been made. Um, but I want to make sure that you are aware that you might see this type of notation. It is in your book kind of to start with, to understand before they start making those those lines to show covalent bonding, okay? So I just want you to see that this is a possible notation, but this is the guy that we're gonna be using all the time, okay? All right, let's get to more complex ones with double bonding.